I'll start out with nice and simple, lemon drizzle, lots of flexibility there, okay? So, first, we're gonna go in with the ingredients list, okay? Got a nice big bowl here. You want a couple of lemons, okay? And you want three eggs, any size will do. Then you want 175 grams of self-raising flour. Put that there. That's pretty much the basics. Oh yeah, and the butter. Unsalted butter, preferably, and that is 175 grams of that. And let me check, miss anything else? No, pretty much that. And then a little bit of milk, splash of milk, that comes later, okay? So, I hope you got that. Let me know if uh, I've skipped over anything or I'm not making any sense, okay? All right, so, getting into it now. Put these lemons to one side, you won't need those to start with. First, basics of cake making, you want your kind of wet ingredients and then your dry ingredients. And bear with me, I'm a bit out of practice with this, so, uh, Again, do as I say, not as I do, okay? Bye, Freya. Okay, big bowl here. You want to actually see some baking now, don't you? That's why you're here. Uh, or maybe you're just here to, I don't know, point the laugh. But first, as I say, 175 grams of butter. Get your scales out. And I'm going to get the bowl, and I'm just going to zero it, and you got butter, let's say it's a bit hard. Get a knife out. I'm just gonna chop this up. As I say, I'm not cutting any bits. You are seeing the unvarnished experience, all right? So, it's always helps if your butter's been out of the fridge a little bit. Even 10 minutes uh, really helps. Because otherwise, you're gonna be creaming, you're gonna be whisking blocks of butter that are rock hard. So preferably you want it to be a little bit soft, a little bit squidgy, okay? So chop them up into nice little bits. Again, doesn't have to be even, just chuck them in. This just makes it a little bit easier. It's worth it. Okay, less tears. That's 175. In they go. Hope you're all doing well, by the way. Sorry if I can't see all the messages that are popping up and who's dropping in and out. And um, let's say, we're on Zoom and Instagram tonight, so if you want to have a bit more of a verbal chat, join me on Zoom at the moment, as we are every week on there. And let me know what you've been cooking. Let me know what you've been up to, you know? Let me know how life is for you right now. Okay, so also let me know if I'm completely invisible to you and you can't see what in the world I'm doing, okay? Buster, I hope you can see this. Uh, let me move that. Yeah, that's okay. And then... 175, okay, right now 73 in there. And keep going with this. Okay, little blocks, little chunks. But the great thing about lemon drizzle cake, and I'll show you in a bit, is it's quite versatile. So if you don't have lemons, don't worry, just make a cake. <laughs> uh, and drizzle whatever you want in it, basically, within reason. Because one of those recipes, once you get used to it, as I say, try it a couple of times, but it's generally quite forgiving, you know, even if you burn it a bit, which I know I have, it still tastes good. And if you don't want the drizzle on it, it's still a really lovely, uh, kind of delicious cake. And you can even put less sugar in it, reduce the sugar. So I'm putting, uh, usually you'd put around like 175 grams of caster sugar, but what you can do, is just don't put uh, as much of that. You could put 150, 125, uh, and it will still taste good, okay? So there's loads of different options, different ways you can do this. And apologies for my very slow chopping of butter. I think I've been saving this moment a bit too much. In they go, okay, you're like, hurry up. But trust me, the chopping helps, okay? And particularly when you're not talking into thin air, it does uh, go a bit fast, so don't worry about it. All right, 175 grams of butter. 
Now, tiny bit more, a little bit more. A little bit. Yeah, that'll do. All right. Let's wrap this back up and then we'll crack on. Bum, bum, bum. All right. Hi, Lyra, how's it going? Lovely to see you. All right, so, uh, also, I forgot to mention, what you want to do is um, turn your oven to like 160 degrees for a fan oven, 180 for a regular oven, that's the temperatures you want to be dealing with, okay? So I've got the butter in there, 175 grams of butter, a little bit soft. We want to go in with our carbs and sugar, and we want to kind of beat these together, you know? We want to really, really kind of get them, get them going, okay? Caster. As I said, I am going to put in the full amount because I'm feeling a little bit indulgent today, all right? But you don't have to. I'll stick to the recipe for the sake of this video. All right, 175 grams of caster goes in to that 175 grams of butter, all right? Hi. Okay. Whoop, I did a bit over there, I was being hasty. That's what happens when I don't look. Okay. The great thing about this is even if you went over like that, you can still just chuck it back in. Don't worry about it. Now, there you go, you see the unvarnished experience here. There we go. Okay. So we're done with that, we can move on now. Put that to the side, you won't be needing that for a while. And you kind of want to be mixing this together. That's why you want a nice soft butter, because then it helps you. Um, again, what you'll find when you use a whisk to begin with, is you find all the little bits get stuck in it. So what I like to do sometimes, use a bit of a combination. Use a spoon to begin with and kind of squash it in there, okay? Obviously you can use an uh, electric whisk as well. I would recommend an electric whisk. But I'm just going to do it back to basics. So it takes a little bit longer, but you can just think about your life choices while you're doing that. Good time for reflection, I find. So look at that. Right now, you could guzzle this up and it would make you feel extremely guilty. <laughs> but yeah, this is basically what you do to begin with. Just stir these things up. Hello again to those on Zoom. I hope you're doing all right. Yeah, just keep mixing these up, all right? And eventually you will get to a point where you have a kind of a creamy, almost sweet looking butter, a thick mix. Okay? So at this point, as you can see, there's all those bits of sugar, okay? That's not what you want. You want a nice mix of butter and sugar, a kind of a paste, okay? because eventually that butter will melt. And if you think I'm doing this completely wrong, please don't hesitate to tell me, okay? Uh, I want to hear your feedback, because I don't know what in the world I'm doing, all right? So I just figure this out as I go along. Even though I've made this loads of times, you never feel like you've entirely got it, but that's, um, that's the nature of, of cooking and the nature of baking. You always learn, okay? So I just like to get in there with a little mix of two different utensils. Just match it up. Okay, and eventually it all starts to get picked up in the butter. And all those granules start to kind of 
coalesce, you know, and you've got one unified substance. Now, the one reward of this, the one thing about this I find is that um, when you buy shop bought cakes, obviously you see the traffic lights on there, it talks about one serving and all that stuff. Uh, and you kind of feel a little bit bad when you have cake. Because with this, there's no traffic light system. Um, there's no uh, calorie count. So, you know, in a way, you just have a small slice and you don't need to really think about it too much. I don't know, that's just me. But um, that's the beauty of homemade cooking. You don't get too fixated on all those calories. Uh, you can just enjoy a nice little treat now and again. Once a week isn't too bad for a cake. Uh, when combined with exercise and a good diet, balanced foodstuffs. Okay, so just to show you again, see that starts to kind of become fluffy. I think that's the word. I would say. I don't know. What do you say? I say it's look a bit fluffy. But yeah, we're going to keep this simple. And I told you earlier, didn't I, that I was going to turn the oven on. Let's do that quickly. Okay. 160, you want it on? One thing I would also say, if you're heating your oven up and you don't want to lose too much heat when you open it, turn it to a tiny bit above the heat that you're going to be cooking your food on. So for example, I'll be cooking mine at 160 fan, so I'm going to turn my oven up to 170, so I don't lose as much heat. Okay, so start to see it form, see it come together. Bit of elbow grease, good bit of exercise. There you go, look at that. Oh, it's almost like fondant, isn't it, at this point? I mean, you know. All right. Oh, it's been a bit of a, a bit of a stretch there. So next, you want to sort out your dry ingredients, okay? I mean, another thing actually, I'm so used to, what the thing you can do is, so this is a lemon drizzle cake. Uh, you can make it orange, you can make it lime, you can make it with, well, most things really. Uh, the zest of most fruits, passion fruit, I suppose. It'll be fancy. But at this point, you can add in the zest of the lemon. So if you wish, you can get your lemons. And you can get yourself a grater and just grate it in. That is your choice. I feel like uh, tormenting myself today, so I'm going to do a little bit of that. Okay. Now don't go too crazy. And don't worry about all the lemons because I kind of get bored after a while. I don't know about you. A little bit of zest just adds a little bit of added lemony flavour to your sponge. Because in lemon drizzle cake, it's a basic sponge cake, but the drizzle, of course, of the name, gives it that lemony flavour. Put a little bit of zest in, just adds a little bit of that je ne sais quoi, in my opinion. And bonus points if you manage not to grate your fingers off. Okay. If only you can smell that through the camera, because, oh my, it smells really nice. As I say again, if you have an allergy to citrus fruits, go 
Don't worry about it. Um, just don't use, don't use the lemons, just make a basic sponge cake. Uh, again, as I am showing you here, and it will taste delicious. If you want to add kind of non-fruity flavours, you can make a syrup using tea, using coffee, uh, using spices, little spice sugar syrup and put that on top. Again, there's loads of options, really. I'm give my hands a little clean. Always keep washing your hands throughout, really helps obviously. Let me show you, look at that, do you see that? And hi Tom, who's just joined us. So just mix that in again. And we get a bit more of that elbow grease. Okay. Good stuff. Now this is such a case, uh, I would say, of investing in a hand whisk, in an electric whisk, I'm sorry, because you can see it's taken me quite a while, because I'm out of practice. After all, strength a bit lacking, so. As you can kind of see, fluffier, <coughs> like a paste, just as I said. So now, we're gonna add in the eggs. that bang out. There we go. Got a bit flew away. Oh yeah, they're here. Here we go. <laughs> Alright. So one at a time, one at a time add your eggs uh, and then whisk it. And once it's incorporated, add the next one. Okay? That is the trick. Always keep a little ramekin or a little pot just to put your shells in, makes things a bit easier, or put them directly in the bin. Whatever kind of floats your boat. Boom, egg one. Whisk. Okay. Just. There it goes, incorporated. See that? So you've got kind of more of a homogenous mix there. It starts to get yellow, okay, with the egg yolk and with. So I said to you earlier how it's really hard to uh, mix it, kept getting stuck. When you add the eggs, really helps out, makes things a bit easier. So don't worry if you're thinking, this is so thick, how are we going to make a cake out of this? That always my thought too. Add the eggs, uh, problem solved. Crack on the side, boom, open, like that. If you feel like flamboyant, uh, then you can, yeah, crack it with one hand for no reason. Now look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but it starts to become much thinner there. Don't over whisk it again. If your cake doesn't rise that much, as mine has sometimes not risen much, then that can be because of over whisking. Okay? So, there we go. Lovely smell there. Look at that, a bit frothy. Quite thin, yeah? Sloppy. That's because, of course, we have not added our flour yet. Say hello to your scales once again. Slapping that down. Then we want to add ourselves some flour, okay? Resist the urge to wipe your hands on yourself. Uh, 175 grams of flour. What you can do if you like almonds and you're not allergic to them, some ground almonds you can substitute. So you could put in 100 grams of self-raising and uh, 75 grams of 
grand orcs. But I'm not going to do that because my dad has a nut allergy, so I don't want to kill him. That wouldn't be fun. Make sure it's all zeroed on your scales. Make sure your bowl is kind of central. You can sieve your flour. I'm not going to bother because um, life's too short for sieving sometimes, in my opinion. Okay. Once again, I added in a little bit too much stuff. All right. And if you add in too much flour, then just get a spoon, spoon a bit out, don't be afraid. There we go. And as you can see on your scales, you are back up to, back down to the value that you need. Okay, so in my case, 175 grams. Now is the time, if you want to add a little bit of spice to it, okay? So lemon drizzle cake, basic ingredients, you saw, butter and your sugar, cream them together, add your eggs, one, two, three, then whisk, add your flour, boom. You can add in spices if you want. This is self-raising. So the great thing about it is self-raising, obviously you don't need to have any baking powder or that jazz, nice and simple by the bag, quite cheap from your supermarket. Here's a little tip, you don't really get that. I kind of make this thing up. Uh, I don't know, maybe other people have done it, I'm sure, but you can add a little bit of turmeric, lovely spice, lovely uh, kind of root, powder root, makes it extra yellow. You know, really gives that placebo effect of lemon flavor. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that. And this is not an expensive thing. Again, you can get it for like a pound or less, I think, a, a jar of it uh, in the supermarkets. I'm gonna add a little bit of ginger because I love lemon and ginger combo. Don't know if you guys are a fan. I mean, it's kind of classic, so I thought a little bit of that. I like my spices. I know most people can be a bit marmite on their spices. I don't know. Let me know um, if you voice disapproval, approval, if this is your thing, or if you're like, yuck, why are you doing that, John? Um, but yeah, I don't know. So you notice I've moved to a spatula here because uh, it's a little bit softer. You want to fold in, so this isn't beat. So we we kind of creamed butter and sugar through beating it together harshly, and then we mixed in our um, we whisked in our eggs. Sorry, so beating with spoon, whisking eggs, and then folding with this like slice and fold again, I'm not the best to do, it. doesn't matter. Probably best to move your scales out of the way. And just scrape around the edges and go in, okay? And you can start to see the powder become incorporated into your wet mix. And then it starts looking less, uh, less like one thing, kind of less, bear with me. Sorry, that was the front door. Okay, so, as you can see, let me show you. You can see the stuff mixing together there, and you don't want lumps so much. You don't want bits of white powder, unless that's what you're into. And scrape around the edges there. And by the edges, I literally mean go up the side of it and just pick up all that power and look at that. Again, I hope you can see this. Can you see this? Is that visible? But yeah. So basically, that's the final step, really, pretty much. A bit of hand sanitizer, not inside the dish. For your hands only. So here comes the step, if you so wish, to add a bit of milk, just makes the sponge a bit airier, okay? A little bit of that, any milk will do, skim, semi-skimmed, whole, 
flush on that. And then again, just mix it around. Another variety of this that you can do, uh, which I was really tempted to do, is uh, lime and coconut. So you can put lime and uh, zest in it and lime on the top, which I'll show you later. You can do that instead of lemon and add a bit of coconut, desiccated coconut, which you can get from the supermarkets in there. And then you've got yourself a different flavour of cake, a bit more kind of Caribbean flavoured. So we're mixing in the skimmed milk there, the semi-skimmed milk, any milk will do. This just helps also, helps you kind of uh, push your mix into the uh, baking, into your, your, your tray. So a point of this is I, asked, I told you I'd be doing lemon drizzle cake, okay? You can do lemon drizzle cake obviously in a round tin like a slice cake like this, you can do it in one of these, round tin, or you can do it in this, a loaf tin with slices. And that's what I'm gonna to do today, okay? I'd recommend they call them a two pound tin, that's the term. They don't really cost two pounds, but they still weigh two pounds. Um, they can get for two pounds, I don't know, but these things are handy. I think I got this off Amazon uh, a few years ago for like six pound, fifty, seven pound. It's a good investment, recommend. Because you can basically cook any cake in this um, and you'll get a nice tall cake, nice uh, moist slices, okay? So what you can do is cut a bit of greaseproof paper and put it in there. Today I'm going to show you something slightly different. These things, they're like uh, large loaf cake cases. You can find them in supermarkets on Amazon and stuff. I'm going to use one of these because I get a bit lazy. Put one left. Handy. And you can see this. I quite like these because you can just basically get your tin and just drop it in there like that. And then there you go. No faffing around. And I like that. Obviously, you want to be lining that. Okay. Use butter, use oil, whatever you want. Spray the inside of this, ensures that the paper sticks to it, okay? And then, yeah, just rub your hands on the inside. Don't be afraid. You don't really need to coat the bottom, just the sides. Do you see that? There you go. That's what you want. And then just put your paper to your case, in my example here. Wash your hands. All right, just some stretches. And then, here we go. I know it took a while to get to this point. It's, it's a bit annoying, I know. And just kind of dollop this in there. Scrape down the sides. Mmm. I would say it looks good enough to eat, but it doesn't because it's cake and it's raw. It probably won't be good for your stomach. I'd say probably, I know it, but not too much of it anyway. So yeah, just keep going. And try not to let any of it escape. See that? Ha! <laughs> oh, thanks Emma. Yeah. How's Italy? We've got some real globetrotters here. 
I mean, speaking of Italy, uh, obviously, uh, Sicilian lemons, some of the best lemons you'll get. I think these are, I don't know where my lemons are from, I'm not sure, they're probably some inferior version, but Italian lemons, uh, from what I hear, are generally the best sort of lemons, great lemons you can put in your, your cakes, baking, whatever. Okay, so, straight round the sides there. That's why spatula is kind of handy, because you can just, just curve your way through and pick up all this good cake, all this good mix, and dollop it, boom, like so. The reason I'm taking longer is because I kind of want to get most of the bits out. I've lost my patience now. All right. Oh, Venice. Oh, lovely. Wonderful. Beautiful sunset. Very nice. Now, you can see that my uh, cake mix going in is far from perfect. A bit messy looking, a bit rough, but that's okay. If you want to flatten it out a bit, get a, a wet spoon and just smooth over the top, okay? And that will just help you ensure a bit of a more even rise. You won't get a, a, a kind of lopsided cake as much. All right, there you go. I know it's quite unremarkable, but this is the basic mix. And you just basically put it in the oven for about, oh, what is it like? Yeah, under an hour, so around kind of 50, 55 minutes. That will do the trick, okay? Lemon drizzle cake, butter, sugar, eggs, flour, a bit of spices for me, uh, a bit of lemon zest, uh, and yeah, just mix that all in, and then you've got yourself cake, okay? So I'm gonna put that in the oven. Middle shelf, 180 or 160 degree fan for, I'm gonna go for 50 minutes, okay? So, that leaves me done for this period. Just going to tidy things away a little bit, okay? And then I will be back. In the meantime, I am um, yeah, cleaning some stuff up. And I'll post the recipe for you, for those that didn't get a chance to... Um, see what I was doing here, I'll post the recipe on uh, the Instagram page at Kim's Ready Life, and then you can have a look at it on there as well, okay, just to fill in the gaps, all right? And I'll be on, uh, as I say, within the hour, looking at the time here, I'll be on, uh, back on just before nine o'clock, okay? And then I'll show you how the cake has gone, and I'll show you how to make the lemon uh, drizzle, the topping, all right? So thanks for tuning in at this point, and I'm going to switch off the recording now and I'll be back very soon, okay? So, bye-bye, see you soon. Hello again, uh, it's me. As promised, I've come back with a bad penny, as the expression goes. Um, and my cake's been in the oven here, the lemon drizzle. So I'm going to take it out and have a look at it. It's had around 56 minutes now, I left it a little bit longer um, because I've just set up the camera here, okay? So I'm going to go and fetch it, and we shall see how the cake went, all right? Hello to everybody who's joining. Again, nice to see you. All right. 
But what you want is a golden top, kind of like this, just a little bit less dark, because we've had a few more minutes. That's okay. So you can see that, let me show you. There you go. That's pretty much what you want. As you can see, lovely crack in the middle there, and lovely split, and you have that lovely yellow sponge. And that's what the turmeric did, that extra yellow, all right? So here's what you want to do. Get your broadsword, your dagger, your whatever, spiky implement, uh, or just a fork or a knife, anything. And just poke it in once, okay? And if it comes out clean, like this, then you can go ahead and do the drizzle. So poke a few holes in, just around everywhere, here and there, and this will help the drizzle permeate the cake. So you don't just have stuff on top, you'll have mm, little pockets of lovely sweetness in the cake, okay? Mm, smells good. So now I'm gonna show you how to make a lemon drizzle, the drizzle itself, okay? And it's nice and simple, basically. All you want, leave that there, all you want is your two lemons and 100 grams of sugar. Pretty much all you need, okay? First, I'm gonna show you a little tip. You've got your two lemons, okay? They're quite expensive, aren't they? So you wanna get quite a bit of juice out of them. Uh, you can put them in the microwave for around 30, 45 seconds, okay? I'm gonna show you that. Get yourself a knife. and just slice these in half, okay? And then put them in your bowl, however you want to, any bowl, maybe bigger than this. Put your bowl in, the, uh, in there for around, yeah, let's try 30 seconds, shall we? No missing in there. Okay. And again, let me know what you guys are eating tonight. Uh, make me feel hungry, okay? Uh, let me know what you've been up to and how is life. And let me know if you have the time to do any kind of baking and stuff. Because I know life can be busy and sometimes it's hard to find the time. Uh, but when you're not talking to a camera, these sorts of cakes can be much easier to cook, okay? That lovely cake, I don't want to tuck into this right now, I can tell you. <laughs> I wish I could pass it through to you uh, guys watching and you can have some. I'm sorry that tech hasn't been invented yet, it's a shame isn't it? Okay, let's put it in there. Another 30, let's do that shall we? So in the meantime, you want 100 uh, grams of Whatever sugar you can get, really. Jug, quite handy when you want to pour your yours on. Not as big as that, that's a bit big. I couldn't find a smaller one. Okay, any sugar, really. Caster, granulated, brown, light brown, whatever you want, really, doesn't matter. If you don't want as much sugar, don't worry, put in less, okay? It pretty much works any way you want, okay? So, for some reason I decided to poke a tiny hole in this bag so it takes longer than it should to come out. I suppose that's one way of reducing sugar consumption. So, I'm going to put in 50 of bread, dark bread, and then I'm going to put in 50 of granulated. Now, why I like granulated is it adds a nice crunch, okay? Come on, there we go. Now we're cooking. Okay, tell me I'm off you, I don't think anymore. Okay, so look at this 100 grams of sugar. I'd never said this was good for you, okay? Putting the sugar away. 
Don't want to have all too much mess to contend with. All right. So those lemons, all we're going to do for this drizzle is mix the lemon and the sugar and boom, you're there. Okay? Now there's lots of ways you can do this drizzle. Also, microwave in the lemons really makes your uh, kitchen smell nice as well. Kind of uh, almost perfumes your microwave. So, there you go. That's one thing going for it. I love these long spoons. You can get one of those pretty handy. So, can you see this, folks? Okay. Oh, yeah, look at that. Mix that in together for now. Yeah. And. Then you want to squeeze your lemons. You can use a lemon squeeze or whatever, any of those things will do. Whatever you've got really, or just use a fork, like I am here. Don't worry about the tips, you can always pick those off afterwards. Just dig your fork in there, like that, and just squeeze it directly in to your sugar, okay? And it will kind of stop the acid and all that will start to uh, cause the sugar to dissolve and you'll get this lovely, oh, lovely crystallised sugar lemon flavour. Squeeze every last drop out of it, get all your frustration out on that lemon. If you get little bits of lemon in there, that's quite nice actually. Taking it nice and slow, savour it. Okay. And there's the other half. And you probably won't even need all this lemon juice, but you can hold some of it back. You can put it in drinks. Uh, lemon syrup tastes quite nice in a coffee, if you like that. You can even uh, add it to just hot water and it's a nice kind of soothing drink. Or put it on another cake another day. But I'm just going to do all this lemon. Just put that in there, squeeze it out like that. There we go. Give it a nice squelch. You don't need to be as hands on as I have been, okay? Um, feel free to be a bit more dignified than I am, okay? You can tell me I'm completely wrong in this technique. Everybody has their own way, and that's okay. All right, so look, this squeeze. There you go. Okay, I've used up those lemons there. Mm. Oh, that is so fragrant. That is a very lovely smell. All right, so that is now done with. Wash, dry the hands. Okay, now let's move this. A bit more central. So you can see, there you go. Okay, let's move that forward. Can you see that? Yeah? All right. So, as you kind of mix this together, I'm using brown sugar. That's why it looks so brown. It dissolves slightly, so you get a kind of sugary water. Basically Pepsi. Pepsi, sugary water. There you go. Doesn't that look appetizing? Mm -mm. Your cake, you punched holes in it, didn't you, earlier? There we go, like that. Leave it in for added panache. No, don't do that. And then you can spoon it, you can pour it, do whatever you want, really. Well, I like to start out by spooning it on, personally. And don't be shy, again, just Chuck it, you don't have to be too precise. Okay, just make sure that you get the syrup on all the sides of the cake, all the top section. Okay. And just breathe in a lovely aroma whilst you're doing it. Mm. Oh yeah, it's a lovely smell. So as you can see, this is quite a simple recipe really. 
apart from the waiting around in between, you're not having to do much. I mean, even then. You mix a few ingredients together and you've got yourself a lovely cake. And this cake will last, well, I say last, it will store in the, uh, probably around three to four days, I would say, I mean longer if you want. But let's face it, is the cake gonna last that long? I don't think so. But then, how long does it take you guys to consume the cake? I mean, for me, probably around 10 minutes from beginning to end. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, if you've got a few people, obviously, or just cook, just make it for yourself and indulge, because you deserve it, okay? Be good to yourself, okay? You've got to treat yourself now and again. Okay, let's just pour, I'm gonna pour it. No, am I? I don't know, maybe I'm not. Also, I just enjoy the therapeutic aspect of just drizzling it on, like that. And if you put too much on, like I have, you can just uh, tip it out back into the jug if you want. And because I know you want to, okay, feel free, you have my permission to just get your spoon, put that straight in your mouth. Mmm, I had lemony goodness, I'll tell you, mmm, good stuff, mmm, that is nice. I had to plunge that into water so I wouldn't be licking it. Okay, so, you can just pick the seeds off if you wish. Or leave them on. And then you're left with your lovely lemon juice on cake. Okay? I hope you saw how simple that was. So again, if you put a bit too much drizzle in like I did. So have a look at that. You see that? Look at that. There you go. And let me know your opinion on this. Oh, thanks Mal. Thank you. I mean, hopefully it tastes good. It should taste okay. So this is a bit precarious what I'm doing here. Probably not the greatest idea, but just pour it. If you don't want it to be too, too uh, wet. Okay, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Okay, I give up on that. All right. There you go. And, don't need this anymore. Okay. Always good to clean up as you go. I didn't listen to that advice. So let me know if you're interested now. Has that, has that um, enticed you to try it yourself? To try making a lemon drizzle cake, a lime drizzle cake, any of that jazz? And is there anything I missed? Is there any way you do it better? Is there anything you didn't like about it, you did like, as I say, let me know, because I want to change things and learn from my mistakes. So look at this, nice and simple, rustic. I mean, this isn't the Bake Off. We're not looking for precision here. We're looking at, does this fill you up? Does it taste good? Let's find out, shall we? Ideally, you should let that cool in the tin for around 10 minutes, then take it out. I don't know about you, but should I do that? Should I really wait 10 minutes? Um, oh, hi, Palak, how you doing? I don't know if I should. So I'm gonna take this out and just show you what it looks like 
when it's cut through, okay? Now there's a few ways you can do that. I'm just gonna turn it upside down like a savage. Oh yeah. I'll destroy this properly. Turn it up. There we go. Can you see that? Okay. I'm using knife now. So this is why I recommend the paper cases, because you can literally just peel it off like that. And then slice it. Right. Now I don't know if you can see there, but there's a nice sort of crystallized edge on there, which is the sugar. So let's just give it a little, a little slice. When it's hot, it kind of is a bit softer and it will fall apart more easily, so be careful. Let's grab a little plate. There you go. So that's a very thin slice, I agree. As you can see, look at all that dark patches, that's the syrup, okay? So I subscribe to the philosophy that why make it a lemon drizzle cake when it can be a lemon drench cake, okay? Why put a measly tiny drizzle when you can drench your cake with lovely lemony goodness Look at that. Now I know it doesn't look picture perfect, it looks a bit yucky on the inside, but trust me, it tastes so good when you cut into it and you have a bite of that lovely, mm, that lovely lemon infused sponge, okay? So it tastes best when it's been cooled down a little bit. So let's say you make it in the evening like I did, in the morning, <laughs> for breakfast, uh, by the time you wait a few hours, or the next day, it will taste really good. Firms up, okay? Mm. You'll really taste that lemon. I mean, it's so lemony. It's almost a health food, you know? So, I say go for it. And then stop eating this, otherwise I'll... I won't be able to talk, but yeah, there's lemon drizzle cake, ready lifestyle. As I showed you, you don't need all the fancy mixers. I didn't use anything electric there, all the elbow grease. I'm a little bit tired out from out of practice, as I say. I've been doing cooking all these weeks, not really much baking. So there you go, nice and simple lemon drizzle cake, as I say. If you want to reduce the sugar levels, you can. You don't have to put a drizzle on it. You can leave the drizzle off, reduce the sugar by about 25 grams if you wish, and you'll have a lower fat, lower sugar cake. So that's the perfect alternative if you're on a bit of a less guilt, uh, guilty kind of treat, okay? So there we go. Lemon drizzle cake a la Resi Life. And that's me, basically, I'm gonna sign off for now, okay? This week's episode of Kitchen Hacks. And I didn't get a chance to post the recipe earlier, so I will do so imminently, don't worry. This video will be available on YouTube, all the usual platforms and stuff. And coming up in the week, we have Mindful Mondays with Grace once again, lovely meditation, join up for that, definitely. Another tea talk with Franny on a Tuesday evening. And then we've got a few other things going on as well, like a and a if you have any questions. Ah, oh, thank you, I appreciate it. So on Thursday, just to let you know, if you have any questions about Resi Life, about residence events, about CFs, community facilitators like me and 
uh, what our job is basically and life in residences, then there's a Q&A session online. I'll be there, the uh, rest of the crew, Franny, Grace, they'll be there to answer your questions. And that will be uh, half seven on BST on uh, Thursday evening, okay? So I hope to see some of you guys there for that. But yeah, I'm gonna wrap this up, take a few snaps and send them to you guys. And then, yeah, I'll see you guys very soon, okay? So take care of yourselves and I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you can whip up this and it's giving you a little bit more confidence, okay? Because believe in yourself. If you haven't made click before, never better time to start, okay? Do it, send me some photos. I'd love to see what you've been up to, okay? Be proud of what you bake, be proud of what you cook. And yeah, give me suggestions as to what you want to see in future weeks because next week I'm going to show you guys uh, how to make a risotto. And it's much easier than you think, as with most things in the cooking world, once you get out of there, okay? And if you have any more suggestions or criticism or uh, abuse, then hurl it my way, okay? So, <laughs> so enough for today. So I'll see you guys so very soon. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye bye. Thank you.